Now that we've taken the time to derive some very important identities for trigonometry, we're going to take a look at how we can use these new identities. How do we use the sum and product identities? And first, let's look at a use of the sum and difference identities. And just for the sake of review, let's uh, write down what the identities are. We found there were four of them. We can take the cosine of the difference of an angle. We'll call it alpha minus beta. That's equal to the cosine of the first angle times the cosine of the second angle plus the sine of the first angle times the sine of the second angle. We could do a sum, the cosine of alpha plus beta. We found out that was the cosine of the first angle times the cosine of the second angle minus the sine of the first angle times the sine of the second angle. We saw the sine of a sum, alpha plus beta. And that was the sine of the first angle times the cosine of the second angle plus the cosine of the first angle times the sine of the second angle. And finally, we saw that the sine of a difference, alpha minus beta, is equal to the sine of the first angle times the cosine of the second angle minus the cosine of the first angle times the sine of the second angle. So these four identities are our sum and difference identities that we're going to use here. How do we use them? Well, now we can use these identities to help us find the exact values of sines and cosines of angles we weren't able to do before. Let's say we wanted to find the cosine of 75 degrees. That's not one of our key angles. But it can be split up to be either a sum or difference of our key angles. And there's actually two ways to do it. Let's do it both ways so we can see how it gives us the same answer. Um, we could write it as a sum. So I need to think about my key angles that I have, 30, 45, 60, 90. Those are all key angles that we know values for. And notice if I add the 30 and the 40 together, 45 together, I should say, that would give us 75 degrees. So now I've broken that 75 up into a sum. So we can take the cosine of the first angle times the cosine of the second angle minus the sine of the first angle times the sine of the second angle using the cosine sum formula. And we know each of these values on the unit circle. A 30 degree angle is the short one. So the x is long, root 3 over 2. The y is short, 1 half. 45 degrees we know is right in the middle. That's root 2 over 2, comma, root 2 over 2. And so using that, the cosine of 30, that's the x coordinate, root 3 over 2, times the cosine of 45, root 2 over 2, minus the sine of 30, 1 half times the sine of 45, root 2 over 2. Simplifying, that's going to give me root 6 over 4 minus root 2 over 4, which since we have a common denominator of 4, we can write that as the square root of 6 minus the square root of 2 over 4. And now we're able to find the exact value of the cosine of 75 degrees.
We could write 75 as a sum. We can also write 75 as a difference. Using those numbers of 30, 45, 60, and 90, can you get 75 as a difference? Well, maybe not yet. Let's uh, add a few more angles. We've got 125, 135, um, 150, 180. These are all angles we know values of. And what you should notice is 125 minus 45. equals 75 degrees. So we should be able to use a difference formula in order to calculate the cosine of 75. The difference formula says we take the cosine of the first angle times the cosine of the second angle plus the sine of the first angle times the sine of the second angle. And if we set up our unit circle now, 120 is just slightly more than 90. That means we've got a long, oh, I'm sorry, the x coordinate is short, negative 1 half, comma, the y coordinate's tall, root 3 over 2. And the 45 is the same 45 we had before, root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2. And so when I plug this in, the cosine, the x coordinate of 120 degrees is negative 1 half times the cosine of 45 is root 2 over 2, plus the sine of 120, that's the y-coordinate root 3 over 2, times the sine of 45, which is root 2 over 2. Multiplying, that gives negative root 2 over 4, plus root 6 over 4. And since we have a common denominator of 4, I'll just put the positive one first, square root of 6 minus square root of 2, and we get the exact same answer whether we did it as a sum or a difference. All we had to do was identify the combination of known angles to give me the angle I wanted. We did this one in degrees. We like to work more often, though, with radians. So let's try an example with radians. Let's find the sine of 13 pi over 12. Well, let's see. We know pi over 6, which is 2 pi over 12. Getting that common denominator helped me find. Uh, we know pi over 4. That's going to be 3 pi over 12. We know pi over 3. That's going to be 4 pi over 12. We know pi over 2, that's 6 pi over 12. Still not there. Um, 2 pi over 3, um, that's going to be 8 pi over 12. Uh, 3 pi over 4, we know that one. That's going to be 9 pi over 12. And wait a minute, 9 plus 4 is 13 pi over 12. We're going to do pi over 3 and 3 pi over 4 as a sine. We're going to do the sine of 4 pi over 12 plus 9 pi over 12, which reduces. Let's go ahead and reduce that to the sine of pi over 3 plus 3 pi over 4. And using our sine formula, we know that's equal to the sine of the first angle times the cosine of the second angle plus the cosine of the first angle times the sine of the second angle. And so again, we go to our unit circle. Pi over 3 is up here. That's a short x of 1 half, a long y of root 3 over 2. 3 pi over 4 is off to the side, right in the middle. The x is negative, so negative root 2 over 2, comma root 2 over 2. Putting all that together, the sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2, the y coordinate, 
Cosine, the x coordinate of 3 pi over 4 is negative root 2 over 2. Plus the cosine x coordinate of pi over 3 is 1 half times the sine y coordinate of, root of 3 pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. We end up with negative root 6 over 4 plus root 2 over 2. And we like the positive to be first. So positive root 2 minus root 6 over, whoops, 4. 2 times 2 is 4, sorry. And that becomes our final answer for the sine of 13 pi over 12. We could have done it as a subtraction problem, though. There's no reason we had to do it as an addition. Can you find two angles that subtract to the 13 pi over 12? Let's not take it off the screen yet. Well, let's see. 3 pi over 4, that didn't quite get us there. Um, we need something bigger. So we've got 5 pi over 6, which is 10 pi over 12. Um, we've got pi, which is 12 pi over 12. I guess I do need to scroll here. Uh, we've got 7 pi over 6. That's 14 pi over 12. Next would be 5 pi over 4, which is 15 pi over 12. And do you see that one? Fifteen pi over twelve minus two pi over twelve will equal thirteen pi over twelve. So let's use those ratios. We're gonna do fifteen pi over twelve minus two pi over twelve which then simplifies to our known angles. 15 divided by 3 is 5 pi over 4 minus 1 pi over 6. And since we have a difference, we can use our sine of a difference formula that says we take the sine of the first angle times the cosine of the second angle minus the cosine of the first angle times the sine of the second angle, which means we just need our little unit circle. 5 pi over 4 is down here. They're both negative. Negative root 2 over 2. Negative root 2 over 2. Pi over 6 is up here. It's got a long x, root 3 over 2, and a short y, 1 half. And so we just plug in what we know. The sine or y coordinate of 5 pi over 4 is negative root 2 over 2 times the cosine of pi over 6, which is root 3 over 2, minus the cosine of 5 pi over 4, which is a negative root 2 over 2, times the sine of pi over 6, the y coordinate is 1 half. And so when we multiply, we get negative root 6 over 4. Minus a negative makes it a plus root 2 over 4. Since we have a common denominator of 4, we'll say that's root 2 minus root 6 all over 4. And we get the exact same answer that we got before. So these sum and difference formulas really give us a great way to find exact values of sines and cosines that we didn't have from our unit circle discussion earlier. I want to look also at how we can use um, some of the other formulas that we saw. We saw the next set of identities we derived was the product to some identities. And these identities start with a product of sines and cosines. We might have the sine of something times the cosine of something else. And we can change that product to 1 half times the sine of the sum 
plus the sine of the difference of those angles. If we multiplied two sines together, sine of alpha, sine of beta, that would be equal to 1 half times the cosine of the difference minus the cosine of the sum. If we had cosine times cosine, cosine alpha, cosine beta, that would be equal to 1 half times the cosine of the sum plus the cosine of the difference. And so this became the next set of properties that we should be familiar with. And we're just going to do a really quick example so you can see how this can actually work to help us maybe simplify an expression or at least write it differently. And then I'll let you practice these on the homework, because this is just plug and chug from the formula. Let's say we've got the sine of 2t times the sine of 4t. We can write that out, because that's a sine sine. That's 1 half times the cosine of the difference, 2t minus 4t, minus the cosine of the sum, 2t plus 4t. Well, simplifying then, we get 1 half times the cosine of negative 2t minus the cosine of 6t. And actually, we can go one step further here, because if there's a negative inside a cosine, we know it kind of disappears, because a negative or positive angle will have the same cosine values. So I can even take one more step and say that's 1 half times the cosine of 2t minus the cosine of 6t. And I've got my simplified result. So we've changed the product into a difference. There was one other set of properties that we looked at deriving then, and that was going the other direction, going from the sum to the product. And there were four of these identities. If we have a sum of sines, sine of alpha plus the sine of beta, we found out that was 2 times the sine of alpha plus beta over 2 times the cosine of alpha minus beta over 2. If we subtracted two sines, sine of alpha minus the sine of beta, we found that was equal to 2 times the sine of alpha minus beta over 2 times the cosine of alpha plus beta over 2. If we added two cosines, cosine alpha plus cosine beta, we found that was 2 times the cosine of the sum over 2 times the cosine of the difference over 2. And if I've got the cosine of the difference, we found out that was equal to a negative 2 times the sine of the sum times the sine of the difference over 2. So the last four properties that we talked about were these four, taking a sum or a difference to a product. Let's do one example where we can use those as well. Let's um, take a look at simplifying the cosine of 5x plus the cosine of 3x. 
This is adding two cosines together. That's letter C up above. So it's going to be 2 times the cosine of the sum, 5x plus 3x over 2, times the cosine of the difference, 5x minus 3x over 2. Then we just have to simplify what we end up with. That's going to be 2 cosine of 8x over 4 cosine of 2x over 2, which we can reduce those fractions to get 2 cosine of 2x times the cosine of x. I guess we can put that x in parentheses. And so this video was a little shorter than the last one where we actually derived all of these formulas. But it does take a look at how we can use the formulas to help us simplify or evaluate problems. We've got some sum to the product identities. We've got product to sum identities. And we've got the sum and difference identities to practice with. We're going to look at how we can use these identities to help with solving equations and, sol and simplifying identities in another video. But right now, let's get comfortable with using them and recognizing how we can use them. Let me know if you have any questions.